Welcome back to Romance Studies uh, 202. And today it's a great pleasure to have with me my colleague, Professor Anna Casas of the Department of French, Hispanic and Italian Studies here at UBC. And we're going to be discussing um, uh, this book in English. One of the translations is The Time of the Doves by Merce Rodoreda in Spanish, uh, in Catalan, sorry, uh, La Plaza del Diamante, in Spanish, La Plaza del Diamante, translated to many languages. We're reading it in English. And Anna, thanks so much uh, for your time and, and expertise and generosity uh, to talk to us uh, about this book. I wonder perhaps you could... Thank you, you, you could, thank you, John. I, I wonder if we could, we could just start in, in, in general terms about how you might uh, approach, uh, how you might start, what kind of entryway into this book you might suggest. Yes, um, so when I have taught this book, I have uh, done the trigger warning, this is a very sad book and it's uh, something, um, it's not easy to teach and it's not easy to read but it's beautiful. One of its beauties and or one of the um, good things it has is that uh, it has very short chapters. <laughs> so you kind of go very quickly uh, through it and uh, um, it's easy to like read one chapter and then stop or if you want to read more you can put Continue, but I think this shortness has a little bit to do with um, this apparent simplicity that the book has. That uh, in some ways it's not doesn't feel like a complicated book, or the narrator voice is like someone who's um, has been said to be like naive or like simple or like uh, just describing life. But on the other hand, there is like there is so much detail, right? Like you are sometimes a bit overwhelmed by the amount of detail. So this uh, simplicity does not necessarily might sometimes with, like it's an apparent simplicity. There, there is more complication to it. No, I, I, I love that, the, 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 that contrast or, or that tension that you're talking about, that, that, that everything seems simple. And in, in the narrator, Natalia, she seems simple. She's been criticized, I think, by, by some of the critics for being a little naive, not knowing what's going on. But a lot is going on with her, and, and that leads to that leads to some of the the sadness, as you put it, right? The the trauma, um, which gets expressed in in different ways, especially as the book goes along, as a result of the war, but also as the result of her um, personal uh, circumstances. And we were talking earlier on, as we were talking, what we about what we might say um, about the kind of the also the the space of, of Barcelona itself. Um, uh, the the city as uh, as perhaps showing some of this complexity and, and labyrinthine and, and I know you have some slides to show us I wonder if you could talk a little about um, this book and its treatment of space and how it's situated or how the plot is situated within yeah. Barcelona yeah so so uh, first to me that's one of the most amazing um, things of the book is how well, uh, like this mental space that Rudureda has, Marcel Rudureda, that um, like she like she's able to guide us through all it. But on the other hand, like there is this connection, this a strong connection between the sub, like the the narrator and all the people who are there and the the spaces they inhabit. Right. So like uh, we were just saying about to me, one of the most beautiful things is how walls are connected to the skin and how much she's able to say through all the, the apartments she's describing. Her own apartment is sort of a body and the, the um, doves are, or the pigeons are circulating above, around it. And it has this feeling that there is the the heart of the apartment and then there is a way out and there is this like uh, like connection with the body of the ones who inhabit there. And then also we were talking about this um, family she serves in, like um, this bourgeois family who have like this strange house that it's just like a labyrinth and it's very, <laughs> it's like kind of trying to trick her and they 
one hard to go through one door, but there is like a, a place where you ring and like it's uh, and it and to me it says a lot about like the, the class consciousness with this very rich um family that she's like cleaning their house for and serving for and how there is this huge uh, imbalance right between the places we live in. So there's a, I mean, when we're talking about space, there's, there's a lot. I, I love what you're saying about the houses, the, the different domestic interiors, um, yeah. the, the, the house with Kimet, for instance. We get a lot about how that is prepared and, and decorated. And then we get the pigeon coop and, and, and that becomes part of the house. The pigeons become a part of the house, the, the house where she, uh, she works. There's also the space of, of Barcelona, the mm -hmm. streets the shops and so on and the particular neighborhood in which it said of course again the english translate the translation we have is uh the time of the doves so we're, we're talking about time but the the catalan original um it, it's referring to a place it's referring to a square it's referring to a, a, a city square uh in a, in barcelona and we could also there's also the city and and what surrounds it um rural Catalonia, where the, the young boy, the son, is sent, for instance, mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, Spain and, and Europe uh, as a whole. But perhaps you could show us the, the slides that I know you've got uh, about yeah. Barcelona. So you can see here La Plaza del Diamant, the, the diamond square. And this is, in fact, a square that it's surrounded by streets that have the, the street of the pearl, the street of uh, gold, because I think it was an area before where there was some exchange with them. Um, uh, there, there were some shops of like, when it was first uh, founded um, for uh, uh, selling uh, jewelry. So I think it's all related to these uh, first uh, like kind of medieval. And I, what I want to say is that Gracia itself, the neighborhood used to be a small town. Mm -hmm. And that's why it has a still like these not so big houses. Like it doesn't feel that much of a city and in contrast to other parts of Barcelona. And this is uh, here in red. I don't know if you can see it um, here in red. You can see the where the neighborhood is. And um, this is a neighborhood where the streets, I was telling you, are a, little, a bit labyrinthic. And this contrasts with other parts of Barcelona where you have, for example, in the Champla, that it's uh, the, the, the area that was uh, built like with very straightforward streets, like very North American kind of organization. Well, Gracia is a little bit more medieval and has this feeling of like, when you're in the, in the street, <laughs> like um, you're a bit like, sometimes you can get a little bit lost. And it's, uh, as you can see in this image too, there are like many uh, small uh, squares. So that's something too that, that it's interesting, right? That it's not only La Plaza del Diamant that we have in this neighbor. We have Plaza del Sol, Plaza de la Revolució, Plaza de la Virreina, Plaza de las Donas del 36, Plaza del Nord. And all these create like this sort of feeling of um, suddenly you have like a, a stop like um, a bit like a, not a prison, but a, a break. And then you have all these uh, smaller streets that are like creating the connections between the, the, the squares. No, that, I mean, that's my experience also in, in, in Barcelona, uh, in, in that area, you know, you're sort of wandering through these quite small streets and then suddenly you come out, right? Yes. There's a sudden opening and, and, then, and, and then you return to 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 the sort of constriction which which I, I don't know there's ways in which perhaps something like that is also happening from the novel okay so this is we're back in the uh, la plaza del diamant here aren't we yes and this is one well the sculpture they put there uh to commemorate the novel and you can see the the pigeons and um yes what you say is completely to read this feeling of incarceration and liberation this feeling of um being a bit lost and then suddenly having a break is something that it's in the neighborhood itself, right? And I, I think it's um, the, the narrator also goes through these moments in which she feels like in a funnel, like very, it's very hard for her 
to go through. And these are some images uh, uh, from the Festival Major de Gracia. So Gracia is a neighborhood too with a very, so not, not now anymore because now it's a very expensive neighborhood. Like all the, all the rich people want to live there because it's quiet. It has this flavor of um, a small neighborhood, but it used to be a hard, uh, like a, work, a class working neighborhood, right? And within this class working environment and like being thought itself as a small village, they have this competition every month of August. So if you can go there on August, that it's the Fiesta Major, so the, the main uh, festivity of the year, where they uh, dress up the streets with these um, with material, recycled materials and like a theme. And each street has a theme, and they they, um, they compete between one and each other. But really, the, the part is to go out and see all the streets, and then at night there are concerts as the concert. A little bit we start in in the in the in the book so I think that's also too like she has all these explanation and all these details about how La Plaza is uh, really ornamented and I, I think it has like you can go and see these today it's not and here we have the birds yes well those are a different kind but yes a different kind of birds, but that was something to we could talk about, right? Is uh, why is she choosing birds? You you made the point uh, earlier, which I hadn't made the connection, that this is the year before Hitchcock's film, yes, the birds, right? In which the yes. birds are this, the birds kind of turn on on the people, right? They become this um, this threatening uh, image. There's the poster. I have not read many, anything. I, that's something I have always wanted to write about, that, like, what a coincidence. In, in Rotorada, the, 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 the birds, the, the pigeons or, or doves, and we, might, we could talk about which is the better translation, um, they, they start off being, you know, so they're domestic, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, the, and uh, Kimet brings them into, into the home. Uh, they, they sort of, they, they start to take over uh, uh, the, the home um, and, and they start to take over perhaps Natalia. There's this, this quotation in which she says something like, everywhere I went, the buzzing of the birds uh, in, in my head. And she starts to take revenge on them by, by shaking their eggs so that they won't, um, they, they, they won't hatch. Um, what, what do you see the, I don't know, is it symbolic, the symbolism of the birds or the role of the birds or the place of the birds in this book? Definitely, there is a lot of symbolism. I think it happens a little bit too with what I was saying about the architecture, right? The, the, the borders of the self between Natalia and where she lives and with the people she lives are kind of a bit uh, porous or not really fixed. So there is as there is this feeling that sometimes the walls of the house are her skin. There is also this like like a strong strong identification with the birds. Like to start with the name, right? That the husband calls her Kulumeta, and it's not the search identification from the self. It's something that it's kind of brought into her and she needs to kind of deal with it and um for, to me the most and i i i was hearing what you said about the gamben and the bear life and to me what is also most surprising is that why birds like why like it's we're not talking about mammals we're talking about the animals that are kind of farthest to us and i think there is there a bit of um maybe an intertext with kafka and this idea of uh pushing the animali animali animality, animality to the extreme, right? Like not only animals, but insects and birds and the ones that are maybe more far away. But th the other part is that it's also cultural, like Barcelona is a city with a lot of birds. And this idea of um, um, having birds and um, selling them was a, was a business. Like when I told my, one day I was talking to my dad and he did not read it as something special. It was just what some people will do, right? Uh, like you will have maybe cats at home or you will have um, dogs. 
it's interesting that just to go back to um, how we started as well, right? In, in some ways, this is a very simple story um, about uh, a, a young woman uh, who, who whose interests, are, are, you know, are, are fairly superficial at, at first sight, right? You know, she she has a friend and like you know, fashion and 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 so on and so forth, pastry. Um, uh, she's not particularly interested in, in politics and so on. Um, whereas Kimet is, he he gets mobilized and so on and, and joins the militia. Um, she's just trying to stay afloat and to manage the house, right? She's uh, again part of the identification of the house. But she reaches these she reaches these limit states, right? So these limit states of the limit between human and animal, as, as we're saying again, not just any old animal, right? The, the the birds, which just a year later Hitchcock would see as sort of turning against. Uh, the human, this limit state of uh, poverty and, and desperation, and um, uh, where at this point at which she considers, uh, at which she considers uh, killing herself and and her children, um, and uh, also the, the the strange scene in the church, if you remember, where she has this sort of vision. It's a it's a kind of quasi religious vision, but of a of a vengeful uh, of a vengeful God. So. It, I, whether it's be, because of the setting, perhaps, or the uh, of, of the war, I, I, in part, isn't, isn't the book about how ordinary people are pushed, whether they like it or not, uh, uh, to these limits and, and how they deal with that? Yes, and coming back to the the birds, right? like there there are all these parallelisms, so. She kills the birds, the birds, ba- the birds' babies, no? And she's willing to kill her own babies. Like she's pushed by these um, kind of unconscious, very strong um, feelings, desires, I don't know, like emotions that are, are kind of um, uh, quite um, <laughs> negative and destructive, but a little bit to how the Spanish war has been read, right? Like as a country that kills its own children, like as a, a tension, a familial tension that gets to the extreme of bl- blood lines getting completely mixed up with feelings and with passions and with uh, like political uh, ideals. So we, we should we should end, but as a la- as a last thing, I wonder what and we didn't talk about this before. I wonder what you make of the last word, or even the uh, last happy, the last right? happy day. happy, and then the, but the three dots, right? So you know, so it's happy, but three an ellipsis, as if something's not said or something's to follow. We don't. How how do you see the way in which it ends after all she's been through? She sort of achieves a new kind of domestic situation. With the grocer who was going to buy, who 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 sold her the acid, right? But but she she finds she reconstitutes she, she reconstructs a kind of familiar uh, a, a family in, environment. Her, her daughter gets married and so on and so forth, and it ends happy, happy, content. Is that is it in in yeah. in, in, in Catalan? And but dot dot dot. How, how do you see yeah. that end, which is in some ways not an end? Yes, I think, um, well, I don't want to cry, but uh, to me, one of the things that I see a lot, because my grandmother and her brothers went through the war, and it's this generation that, when they were children in their case, but it's this generation that went through so much, um, like, poverty, um, hunger, and yet they want to find the beauty in things, and yet they want to, when something in life is beautiful or goes well, they kind of uh, also take advantage of it, right? And to me, this is the one of the wows of the book is that, wow, how can she go through all these and then just have a life, right? And there is this moment in which she says, oh, I wanted to stay home or I did not feel, but like she treasures what she has. It's little, but it, it's important. That's a beautiful point at which to end. Thank <laughs> okay. you so much. Thank you, you so much, Anna. You talking for hours. You know that, right, John? It's a, it's a fantastic book. And, and, um, and I thank you in part for insisting 
that I read it. So uh, I, I should say that yes, so it's, it's Anna who was uh, insisting on this, and I think it's great. It was it was it was really fantastic, and this discussion uh, has also been great. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you, thank you, Jean, and good luck to the students with it. Thank you.